here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you loved me, delighted in me, and have been loyal to my name, I will greatly protect you. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life and with all that I do for you. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Psalm 91 verses 14 to 16. open in prayer. Father, we come before you and we are ready to encounter you in a new way, Father God. For some of us, it's going to be a very first encounter. And I thank you that your love will reach out to us and touch us. But for others of us, Father, it will be another encounter on another level. And I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would touch us and minister to us in a very deep way. We love you. We are open to you. We come to you just as we are, and we thank you that you receive us just like this, Father God, in the way, in the manner in which we are now. For some of us, we think we're okay, and you're going to just um, take off another layer and help us. But for some of us, Father, we don't think we're okay. And we come in here feeling like, Possibly this is the last reserve. And I know, Father, you're going to reach out and touch us. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> what a start. I'm crying already. Okay. Me wipe my eyes. That wasn't planned. All right. So here we go. <laughs> Just want to welcome everyone. We are here because it is our heart's desire to draw closer to God. Perhaps you've been searching and even feeling like, what is the meaning to life? What is the meaning to my life? Maybe your life feels empty, perhaps void of purpose or any form of meaning. There's a sense of not going anywhere. There may be a sense of emptiness. There may be a sense of not belonging anywhere or to anyone or perhaps of being anyone of significance. Perhaps you actually believe the lie that the world can carry on without you and nobody would notice. Well, I want to switch for a moment. When we buy a product and then we're not sure how to use it, we need to get hold of the manufacturer's instructors, instructions. The one who created the item in the first place because they know how it works and they know when it's broken and what we are doing wrong that it's not working in the first place. I was recently gifted with an air fryer and I watched the, yes, it was wow, I was very blessed. And I watched the basic instructions on YouTube to get started. We are exactly the same when we don't know where we are going, when we feel confused or broken. It's best to go back to the manufacturer's instructions. The Bible is more than an app. <laughs> Some of us just think it's an app on our phone. It's best to go back to the one, the only one, who is able to show us how we work what's wrong, and how to fix us. The best way to find our meaning is to, is to go to the one who created us. The problem we often make is to go to the world for our answers. Let me give you some examples that we can be shaped by in a classroom. Being taught by a teacher and they're teaching you their ideals and opinions in life. Whether it is a classroom, a university lecture hall, or even people at work, they have their own ideas on the Bible, on who we are, on what we are and aren't allowed to be. 
on what we're allowed to do and what we shouldn't do, on the afterlife, on sin, on how they think we get to the afterlife if they believe that there's an afterlife. They have their opinions on how we got here, on when it's okay to take a life, who we should literally hate and who we should embrace, and the list goes on. And so we build up our ideals and beliefs according to what people say. Social media has a huge way of indoctrinating a specific idea, as well as magazines, articles, movies, and series. Now, just like the air fryer, often we get the, basic in, we get the basics and we're able to go on from there for a little while. But we can't sustain it on our own. So then what happens is we get stuck again. And that's why it's important that we keep going back to the instructions from the manufacturer on a daily basis in order to remain rooted in knowing who we are according to the manufacturer. That's why Romans 12 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The Bible refers to him as God. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus changed that relationship when the disciples asked him how to pray, and he said, Father, our Father. He said, pray like this, our Father in heaven. And then just before Jesus is about to be crucified, he takes the level of the relationship that we can have with the Father to a whole nother level when he says, Abba, Father, which literally means darling daddy. It says in Mark 14, Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering from me, yet I want your will to be done and not mine. Jesus wasn't trying to manipulate God to change his mind about going to the cross. He was affirming the character of God, who he is, and how much he loves us. So now back to the air fryer. I needed to clean the air fryer. There's a button. It's right here at the top. There's a button with an arrow. No matter how much I tried to pull it, I just, it seemed stuck and I couldn't get it open. So she suggested I look at the YouTube video again. <laughs> but then when I lifted it up to show her, I literally lifted it up to show her, I was amazed. <laughs> It came out. It didn't need to be pulled. It just needed to be lifted up. And so there are two truths in our walk in this life. If we want meaning and purpose, we will truly find that God created us for, an inc- for incredible meaning and purpose, but we've got to go to his YouTube video and not the world's. And as we get to know him, we will understand the incredible love he has for us, how precious we are to him. We will notice that he doesn't see our flaws and our mess ups because he looks at us from the perspective of greatness that he has for us. He actually knows how we work and he loves us. He marvels at us. Not the way someone marvels at a movie star. You know when you look at someone, you admire them until you find flaws. Not like that. He marvels at us the way a father marvels at his child. He's aware of all the flaws, but it's not his focus. His love for the child is his focus. He values us. He doesn't try to pull good things out of us. He knows the value and treasure already inside. And he just lifts us up in adoration 
and love knowing that when we walk in his footsteps in purpose, the lost, the broken, those in pain will benefit from us. The second thing that is so valuable is that, as other, that, is that other Christians will do the same for us. Just encouraging us to go back to the manufacturer's manual and sitting with us to help us work things out together to lift us up so that we understand that we are cleansed because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. Sometimes we know, we acknowledge that we are partially cleansed by the blood, but there are areas that we just can't seem to get to. And we know that there must be a way, but we don't know how to get there. But when we come to him, either through the manual or through allowing other Christians to help us get to him, we'll have understanding that he has lifted us up with Christ and we are completely cleansed. There is so much strength in godly friendships, in people who will lead us and encourage us and help us. And we find those friendships right here in the invitation. We find them in church and soul, and we weave them into our worlds. You know, when you go to a wedding as girls, we love to share that experience with our girlfriends, right? Right? <laughs> what you're going to wear, how you're going to do your hair. You might discuss makeup ideas. Or go to the salon to get your nails done or to have a pedi um, if you're wearing a pair of strappy shoes. And even if you're doing them yourself, it's a topic of conversation. Even after the wedding, someone compliments you on your nails and you go, oh, thank you. I had them done for a wedding. I chose pink to match my shoes because details are so important, right? And then the other person will respond and say, how lovely. Do you have a picture? And you become lifelong friends after that. But we weave our lives and our experiences together every day as we meet people. Our lives are an invitation. But it's important that we know who we are and whose we are. Genesis 1 tells us in tw verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He cre created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. What that was saying is this. You are beautifully created. That you are specifically called. That you are lavishly blessed. That you are nobly elevated for him and for others. And in order to live in purpose, we have to understand that that incredible love for the Father is pointed very personally at each and every one of us. There is nothing that you can do to disappoint Him. I need you to hear that. There is nothing that you can do that you have done that disappoints your Father. There is nothing that he looks at in disgust and in shock. His love for you is far greater than the very worst thing you have done, said, or even thought. Listen to this beautiful affirmation from Romans 8. It says, And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then ladies, listen to this. This is God speaking to you. 
in Psalm 91, God saying to you, because she has set her love upon me, therefore I will deliver her. I will set her on high because she knows and understands my name, has personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake her, no, never. She shall call upon me, and I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will deliver her and honor her. With long life will I satisfy her and show her my salvation. Isn't that beautiful? I want to read it again, but from the Passion Version. Listen. Because you loved me, delighted in me, and have been loyal to my name, I will greatly protect you. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life and with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. God loves us so, 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 so much. God loves you so much. He doesn't look at you in disgust or shock or worthlessness. He does not look at you like that. And so, this is an invitation now to love him back. I'd like us to close our eyes. And perhaps this morning you have never encountered God. You've never taken the opportunity to say, I, I, I realize you love me and I want to love you back. And I want to do an altar call and I literally want to pray for you. And if, if that's you, if you believe to, that's you today, you want to respond to him, I just want you to lift your hand in the air and down so that I, I see so many hands already on this side. Thank you. Lots of hands in the middle as well and on that side. There's so many hands. Girls, I want to tell you, as you make that response, your whole life will change. I see your hands. I see your hands. You can put them down. Perhaps, perhaps today you're saying, I did call you once as father, but I walked away because of stuff that was done to me or because of stuff that I personally did and I knew it was wrong. And today, Father, I want to come back again and I want to love you again. I understand you love me and you've never stopped. If that's you, I want you to just quickly raise your hand and lift it down so that I can include you in the prayer. Thank you. I see again lots of hands, lots of hands in the auditorium. Thank you. You can put your hand down. I'm going to pray now. But I want to say to you, you know, the, the opportunity we have, our lives run parallel to eternal life. And we are walking right now today, just perhaps open your eyes for a second, I want you to see this, but we are walking today in time. But eternal life, eternity is, is exactly the same, it's just not bound by time. It's, it's, it's happening right now. We know people, loved ones, who've stepped into eternity, and eternity is running alongside us, just not bound by time. We are bound by time. But there's going to be a time where we're going to step into eternity. And I want to tell you the cross of Jesus Christ stands in eternity as if it is today for you. It may have happened to 2,022 years ago, but it's as if it happened today. The power of the cross is for you today. And perhaps you didn't respond as I spoke. I just want to say to you, before I pray, today is for you. The love of God is for you. He's going to do a work in you today, layer upon layer. Maybe you've come with stuff that is, I don't have the words. It's been so great. It's altered who you are. It's altered your life. And it's, in a, in a sense, destroyed you today. I want, I want to say to you, open up your heart Give your father a chance to do the healing work and the miracle work he so desperately wants to do in your life. 
So let's just close our eyes as I pray now. Perhaps you didn't respond and you'd like to respond now. When you just put your hand up in the air, thank you, I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you, I see your hands. Thank you, I see that hand. Is there anyone else? Thank you, I see that hand. I want to thank you for responding. You can put your hands down. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask that we all pray together, but those who raise their hands, won't you pray this with all of your heart? There is a darling daddy who hears your prayer, and today he's going to touch and respond as you encounter him. Let's say together, Father God, I come to you, and I give you my life. I surrender, Daddy, to you completely. I thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sins. And today, I understand that you've washed me completely clean of all my sin, of my past and my shame. And I'm a new creation. I am clean. You have cleansed me. Thank you, Daddy. I love you. And I surrender myself to you today. Father, I pray for every lady that is here today. I ask you to touch her. I ask that through your Holy Spirit you would minister your love and your power and your healing on a level that is divine, Father God. I pray, Lord, that her testimony of how you touched her would be on her lips for the rest of her life because, Father, we know as we are here together through your word how much you love us, how much you love her. I pray, Father God, that from this moment forward, your Holy Spirit would just continue to do a work that blows us away, takes our breath away. We love you, darling Daddy. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear the sound?